Hello and welcome. Today, we're diving into a fascinating world of biology and human behavior as we explore Behave, the biology of humans at our best and worst, written by the brilliant neurobiologist and primatologist, Robert Sapolsky. This exceptional book combines Sapolsky's career-long exploration of what makes us tick as humans, illuminating the complex interplay of our biology and behavior. Robert Sapolsky, a professor of biology and neurology at Stanford University, has dedicated his life to understanding the complex mechanisms that drive human behavior. Behave is the culmination of his decades of work, providing readers a unique insight into how our actions are shaped by everything from genes and hormones to culture and upbringing. Key point one, neurobiological underpinnings. The first key theme in Behave is the neurobiological underpinnings of our behavior. Sapolsky underlines how the brain's structure and function affect how we act and react. From the firing of neurons to the effects of hormones, our biological setup influences our emotional responses and decision-making processes. Hormones such as testosterone, for instance, are intricately linked to aggression, while oxytocin plays a significant role in bonding and trust. Moreover, Sapolsky stresses that our brains are not hardwired structures, but are continually shaped by experiences. This concept of neuroplasticity shows how factors like stress, learning, and environment can significantly influence our brain and thus, our behaviors. Key point two, genes and behavior. The second key point focuses on the relationship between genes and behavior. Sapolsky explains that while genes play a role in our behavior, they are not deterministic. Rather, they interact with the environment in complex ways, a concept known as gene-environment interaction. For example, having a certain variant of a gene might make someone more susceptible to stress, but only if they've experienced traumatic events in their life. In essence, our genetic makeup offers potential paths, but the environment helps determine which path we take. Key point three, biology and morality. The third major point is the biological basis of morality. Sapolsky explores how our biological systems influence our moral decisions and actions. He discusses how hormones, brain regions, and even gut bacteria can sway our ethical choices. In a broader context, he also examines how our biological and evolutionary heritage, including in-group and out-group dynamics, shape our moral and ethical frameworks. This interplay challenges the idea that morality is purely a social construct, indicating a far more complex picture. Key point four, us vs. them. Sapolsky delves into the biological roots of us vs. them, mentality, exploring how humans naturally categorize and favor their in-group over others. This tendency, deeply ingrained in our evolutionary history, helps us navigate social dynamics, but also fuels bias and discrimination. However, he also emphasizes that these biases are not immutable. Given our brain's plasticity, understanding these tendencies can help us consciously combat our biases and foster greater empathy and inclusivity. Key point five, violence and aggression. The fifth key point of behave revolves around the biology of violence and aggression. Sapolsky presents a multifaceted view, analyzing these behaviors through genetic, hormonal, environmental, and cultural lenses. In doing so, he underlines that violence and aggression are not merely products of bad genes or evil individuals. Instead, they are complex phenomena influenced by a myriad of biological and environmental factors that we can study to mitigate their occurrence. Key point six, empathy and altruism. Next, Sapolsky examines the biology behind empathy and altruism. He explains how certain neural networks and hormonal systems promote these behaviors, allowing us to feel and understand others' emotions and act selflessly. He posits that while empathy and altruism have evolutionary roots in kin selection and reciprocal altruism, they have transcended these origins in human society, pointing to the role of culture and social norms in fostering these behaviors. Key point seven, stress and health. In the seventh key point, Sapolsky focuses on the relationship between stress and health. Chronic stress, he argues, is a significant health risk because of its impact on various physiological systems. 
It can affect our immune system, heart health, and even the structure and function of our brain. Sapolsky's research highlights how understanding the biological effects of stress can help us develop better strategies to cope with it, improving our overall health and well-being. Key point eight, culture and behavior. Culture and its influence on behavior form the eighth key point in the book. Sapolsky emphasizes that while biological factors shape our behaviors, cultural norms and values also play an indispensable role. They affect how we express our genetic predispositions, how we perceive and react to our environment, and even how our brains develop. Key point nine, free will. The ninth key point tackles the concept of free will. Sapolsky challenges conventional notions of free will by discussing how our actions are influenced by a myriad of biological and environmental factors. He suggests that our understanding of free will must be nuanced to consider these influences, reshaping how we think about responsibility and punishment. Key point 10, change and growth. Finally, behave emphasizes the human capacity for change and growth. Despite the myriad of factors influencing us, Sapolsky affirms our ability to learn, adapt, and change. Our brains are remarkably plastic, and we are capable of overcoming our biological and environmental constraints to a large extent. In conclusion, BEHAVE provides a rich and detailed exploration of the biology behind human behavior. The fundamental lesson from Sapolsky's book is that our actions and choices are the result of a complex interplay of genes, brain function, environment, and culture. While these factors can limit or influence our behavior, they do not define us. Instead, they provide us with a framework within which we have the capacity to learn, grow, and change. Robert Sapolsky's Behave offers a powerful reminder of the complexity of human behavior. It underscores that our behaviors are never just about nature or nurture, but are always a combination of both. With this knowledge, we can better understand ourselves and others, fostering empathy, understanding, and ultimately, improving our societies. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into Behave, the biology of humans at our best and worst. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you found it as enlightening as we did. Stay tuned for more insightful discussions on influential books. Until next time, happy reading.